I felt like what Allegri was so special about him was that he was life obsessed and he spoke about football, but it was just part of his life. It wasn't his whole life. Do you know what? I'm, I, uh, I'm going to have to, well, no, no spoilers here. I've just had like a, a memory that the first time I, uh, I sat down with Allegri at Juventus training ground, um, they had the Game of Thrones throne <laughs> in the room like they, they were there doing like some some photos with Juventus players and it's only just like hit me it's just one era has just come to an end at the same time as other has and that's an anecdote that doesn't really mean anything because it was just happened to me when I was there they were doing that shot um I you know but I, I I was thinking of it because as you were saying that about your admiration for him um I remembered meeting him that first time and being uh, yeah very struck by him I think he's uh, he came across uh, very well, and I think he's always come across uh, very well to me in interviews. I think he is an intelligent, and in my opinion, a, an absolutely excellent coach. Um, I said it on this podcast, I think last time, or certainly in, in recent times, he can be an excellent coach. He can be, in my opinion, um, one of, you know, I think, well, the, not even opinion, the numbers speak for themselves. His achievements, uh, unprecedented winning five consecutive Scudettos, no manager has done that before. Uh, even if the scene was started before him, he has the best winning percentage uh, in Serie A of any um, Juventus coach ever. He's, he's achieved incredible things, and all that can be true, and it can still be the right time to move on. That's possible, right? You can still reach that point with the manager. My issue with this, not as a Juventus fan, um, I'm not in the, in the same boat with you there, Mina, but my issue with this as uh, an observer is I find it extraordinary to let go of someone like that Mm -hmm. someone who has achieved so much without a very clear plan for what you're doing next. And my perception of this, Gab, is, is that they haven't got that uh, clear well, idea of what's uh, happening next. I think part of the reason is, is the way it happened. And, and, and I think this is a big part of the story. And, and also on the back of what Mina said, I think a lot of evidence that there's a lot of people who feel the same way. Uh, Juventus, we've been really hard on them when they've done stupid tone deaf things <laughs> like the tweet about Ronaldo or the Leo Bonucci and then the guy keep putting on nonsense on his social media after the Moise Ken thing. Um, and then the way they let people go. I mean the guy before him, Antonio Conte, sort of drives himself out in you know on a hot summer's day in in July. This one, if you are gonna part ways, they did it right. Um, they called a press conference, uh, both Agnelli was there with Allegri. They had the entire team, all the players, even Cristiano Ronaldo, were in the room. I specifically asked a colleague of mine, were any of them on their phones? So this thing lasted 45 minutes, and we're talking about pretty fidgety, short attention span. Great question. No, mm -hmm. None of them were. Certainly not Cristiano. Cristiano sat and listened the whole time, apparently. And it was pretty emotional. I mean, it was about as emotional as Agnelli's going to get, right? He talked about how it was the most difficult decision of his since becoming Juve president. Talked about how he actually made a friend. Um, Allegri several times got choked up, had to reach for the water. Uh, and they were even self deprecating. Somebody said, Oh, is this kind of an example <laughs> how, you know, you have a passionate, loving marriage and then it it ends but you stay on good terms and and uh, that's when um Andrea Agnelli said well, actually, neither Max and I are exactly <laughs> qualified to talk about relationships. And well, well, listeners know what that is in reference to. I, I if they don't, um, well, with Max Allegri, obviously, he does have a failed marriage behind him, but also Max Allegri very famously, he was 25 years old, um, on wedding. the eve of his wedding, uh, decided to call off the wedding. And, of course, in Agnelli's case, you... He separated from his current wife, and the reasons for that you might want to go and uh, and Google. Um, I don't want to get into that too much. Yeah. But this was a good way to handle a bad situation. What I think is interesting is the process, because you know we talked about in the aftermath of the, the humiliation at the hands of Ajax. You know, some fans in the Uvaverse have a, a <laughs> knee jerk <laughs> like reaction: get this guy out, blah blah blah, and and I, I wrote this in, in, in the pieces up on the site, what I was told is the intention on the part of the club was to keep him. The intention on the part of Allegri was to stay. He had a year left. They knew they'd have to sit down and discuss things. Part of the difference was Allegri felt that partly, partly was economic. He was underpaid relative to, to other managers and um, you know, of, equal, of equal status. 
and partly was he wanted a greater say, greater impetus in in transfers. Mm 